Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about a very very useful command if you're doing some debugging on some tool that you don't know what it's doing. Um, and we're not talking about strace today, we're talking about PSTree, um, which <laughs> I'll show you the two invocations that I use that I find are the most useful. I don't really know what the commands do, but or what the arguments do, but I'll show you the ones that I think are the most useful. Anyway, so I was recently talking with a friend and showed them this tool, and they had not seen this before, which uh, surprised me, and I figured if they haven't seen it before, surely you guys haven't seen it before, so let me show you uh, more about this command. In order to do this, I'm actually going to set up a tool that I wrote uh, called git code debt, pip install git code debt, and the way this tool works is it parses git history and gives you charts of, you know, metrics about the git history. Um, and let's say today that I want to generate config.yaml. Let's say that I want to look at the CPython history today. Python slash CPython and database db.db. This is just the config file for this. This part isn't important. This is just, I wanted something. I wanted something to debug. So let's, let's do this. And the way it works, if you run git code dot generate, it will start generating that file. Uh, but this tool intentionally is quiet, doesn't pr produce much output. So I want to see what's going on with that. So I'm going to do psef grep git code, git code debt, and we'll be able to find the process that's running. So that tells us, you know, it's at least running, it's at least doing something. Uh, but I want to see what's going on in this process. And the way we're going to do that is with the ps tree command. And I almost always use dash help. I don't know what it stands for. I know the P stands for process ID, which is what we have to put after that. Uh, but I don't know. I don't remember what it stands for. Uh, and you'll see if we look at it that it's actually running git clone right now, which, oh, wait, we can do this much faster. So I already have a clone of, of CPython on disk. So we're going to skip this for a second. Let's change this to be my on disk clone. Home, Usatili, workspace, CPython. So that'll get us a little bit faster there. And let's rerun this now. Of course, need to refine the process. Uh, you can see there's a bunch of them now, and that's because Git code dead is implemented using some multiprocessing. And if we do ps3-help on this, you'll see that it is forked off and it's doing a bunch of work. Um, I'll actually show you how we can catch the underlying work. The underlying work appears to be much faster than the actual <laughs> than the actual Python code, which makes sense. Um, it's it's calling Git a bunch, so Git's a little bit faster than the manual diff parsing that I'm doing. Uh, the other set of, um, of of command arguments that I use is schlap, which is similar to help, but schlap. Um, it's basically help plus s, and what s does is it gives you the parents all the way up to the root of the uh, PID system. So you can see my init system, systemd, has a systemd user process, and then gnome terminal, which is you know, my terminal process here, then bash, which is my shell, and then get code debt, which is, you know, the command that I ran over here. And so you can kind of see the whole thing there. Uh, I'm actually going to combine PS tree with a command that I showed in a previous video, which I will link the video about watch in the description. Um, and so we can actually see it, you know, changing here. Let's actually give it dash n 1.3. And maybe we'll catch the git processes. Oh, yeah, there we go. There was one. <laughs> anyway, in the middle, it runs git diff. Um, or each each of the workers runs git diff and it's trying to accumulate changes over um, over the whole source tree. But anyway, that's um, that's kind of a, a command there that I find is useful. Uh, since git code dead is probably not going to complete in the time that we're running, let me just show you what it looks like when it actually generates a graph. So here's here's git code dead on GitHub, almost at 400 stars, very very close. Um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff about writing custom metrics, but once it generates, you get this kind of technical debt dashboard where you can see like, you know, various metrics and how they change over days and months. And you can also click into any of those metrics and look at graphs and see like, oh, you know, this Python was growing until something here happened and somebody deleted all the code. I wonder who that was. It was me. Um... <laughs> But anyway, that's kind of the point of Git code debt. And this is a tool I wrote in, I think, 2013, 2014? A long time ago. Seven years ago. Uh, so 2013. Um, but anyway, it's kind of a cool little code dashboard. Uh, we used this at Yelp to figure out, you know, things to things to delete, things to obsolete and track them over time. Um, as I like to refer to it as 
graph-driven development. But anyway, uh, hopefully this was useful. If you have additional things you haven't explained, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. Oh wait, it's done. Actually, it crashed. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.